the A part of seven. <clears throat> After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples yes. at the Sea of Tiberias. Yeah. All right. And on this way, showed he himself. Yeah. Here were together Simon Peter and yes. Thomas called Didymus. Yeah and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. Yes, Lord. And they say unto him, We also go with thee. Yeah. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night yeah. they caught nothing. Well. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yes, he did. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Mm. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? Mm. They answered him, No. Yes. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship. Mm. <laughs> and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able mm. to draw it for the multitude yeah. of fishes. Well. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, mm. it is the Lord. Well. Yeah. We thank God for the blessing that he gives to the readers, the hearers, and to the believers of his holy word. Amen. You may be seated. Father, we stretch our hands to thee, for there is no yes. other help that we know. For if you were to withdraw yourself from us, Lord, there's no other place that we can go. But Lord, I'm coming before you right now. I'm an enemy vessel. You are a full fountain. Lord, I need, I need to be filled. I need to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost yeah. that will enable me to preach your word with holy boldness. Yes. And your God-given authority. Lord God, I pray for that same anointing to fall yeah. upon each and every person that's in this house on today. Yeah. That God, that together we might receive your word with gladness. I pray that it goes down into our innermost being and that yeah. it comes alive and come forth bearing fruit to your glory. Yeah. Precious Father, yes. I ask you to let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my Lord. You are my strength. You are my rock. You are my redeemer. Yes, yes. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ that I pray and let all of God's people say amen. 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 From the portion of scripture that we read in your hearing, I just want to call your attention to verses 6 and 7a and he said unto them cast the net on the right side yes. of the ship and ye shall find well. they cast therefore and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loves saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Well. The Bible yes, is an incredible book. Yeah. It's an incredible book because it's the living word. The Bible says about itself that it is alive and that it is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. Dividing asunder the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrows, and that it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is the word of God. It is the living word. Yes, it is. 
And, and it never ceases to amaze me in how you can read a passage of scripture over and over and then there comes a time when you receive a new revelation. A new illumination. You find that the Lord reveals to you new insight. All right. And in my case, I was reading the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through 20 which says, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee well. saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. They were fishermen. And Jesus said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Yeah. And the Bible says, and they straightway, or immediately, they left their nets and followed him. And the second passage is John chapter 21, verses 1 through 7, that, that we are preaching from today. And I just want to talk with you for just a few minutes from the subject. Jesus is the source. All right. Jesus is the source. Now, 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 you will recall from your study of Scripture, of your study of the Word of God, that, that Peter has spent the previous three years of his life yeah. traveling with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Traveling with him and watching as Jesus had performed miracles. Traveling with him and listening to Jesus teach the word of God as one having authority. Uh, traveling with Jesus and listening to Jesus making public statements about who he was and his place in God's order of the things in the Godhead as pertaining to the kingdom of God. He had traveled with him and, and heard him making statements like, I and my father are one. All right. Making statements like, if you have seen me, Boy. you have seen the father. Boy, yeah. and, and, and we know that people had tried to kill him because they felt that he made statements that made himself equal with God. Well, he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's God wrapped up in the flesh of man. But Peter had been a witness oh, yeah. to many prophecies that were being fulfilled right before his eyes daily. And yet, after all of this, after all of this in our text, we find that Peter has backslidden. Peter has gone back to where he was when he first met Jesus. Well, well. He had gone back. He went back to his old life yes, Lord. of fishing for fish. All right. And 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 you know what? I I, I think. Uh, the tendency to go back is part of our fallen nature well. as human beings. See, when, when, when we, we can't oftentimes see our way clearly well. ahead of us, we have a tendency to go back to that place that, that has been uh, our comfort zone, so to speak. Yeah. Right. No, 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 no. I'm talking about going back. I'm talking about going back. Think, going back, that, 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 that can be a good thing, All right. but it can also be a bad thing. It, it, it can be good if you're going back to get a new sense of direction. Now, it, 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 it's all right to go back if you're going back to get your bearings, hallelujah, and be able to start all over again. But it can be a bad thing 
If you're going back to hide. If you're going back to get out of the game. If you're throwing in the towels there, I'm not going to run this race anymore. See, what we have to understand, church, is that this Christian life is a walk of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight and not by how we feel. See, see, we move forward on this pilgrim's journey. Not by what we see, not by what we feel, but we walk by faith, uh, taking each step on the promises of God, taking each step on the word of God, believing that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perform it until the day of Christ. Amen, Amen Walsh. And as I thought about this passage of scripture, there were some things that stood out to me. And they all have to do with trusting in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And realizing that he is the source. And remembering the three Ps. Not the three Ps that Jonathan on Colonial Penny Insurance talks about when he talks about the three Ps. Price, price, and price. But I'm talking about promise, patience, and purpose. Hey, hallelujah. And see, we need to trust his promise. We need to rely on his patience. And we need to know his purpose. See, see, when, when it comes to trusting his promises, you got to know that Jesus will present and fulfill his promises. Well. We have to trust his promises. Mm. Oh, he will fulfill the promise that he made when he first called us to himself. Amen. See, see, Peter was called by Jesus to be a fisher of men. And we know from what's recorded in the book of the Acts of the Apostles and other places in the Bible that, that Peter was used by God well. to bring people to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, you can look back as early as the book of Acts and chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost came and birthed the church into existence uh, and you will find that it was Peter who spoke to a great crowd of people and about 3,000 souls were added to the church that day and of course this was just the beginning yeah. of Peter's ministry All right. he was instrumental in the salvation of many people fulfilling the promise that Jesus had made to him when he said, follow me and I will make you fisher of men. It's also worth noting that in verse number 19 of this gospel of John chapter 21, that Jesus again says to Peter after his resurrection, follow me. Me, Peter, I want you to follow me. Just as he did when he had first called him. Letting Peter know that he can trust in Jesus and the words that he speaks to us. Well. And understand and know that he would Fulfill the promise that he made to Peter three years earlier. What he said is, Peter, nothing has changed. When I called you, hallelujah, I called you to follow me. And I call you to follow me. And because I call you to follow me, I want you to follow me. Yes. Well, well. See, there, there, there might be someone here today. Maybe God has called you to do something. Maybe God has called you 
to be something that you have not yet seen come to realization. Maybe he has told you that you need to trust in him about a certain thing. Amen. Oh, maybe he has told you that you need to just wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And the day will come when he will strengthen your heart and provide for you everything that he has promised because you can trust his promise. You just have to believe that God in the person of Jesus Christ is the source. Because Jesus is asking that we trust him even when we can't see the end nowhere in sight. And that we follow him and follow him today. As we choose to do when we first believed in him. All right. You know, it's just like the song says, step by step, yes. we are making this journey, All right. but we must keep our faith in God. God told me to tell you today that it's too late to turn back, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, he told me to ask you what is there to turn back to. Hey, you just keep moving forward and holding on to God's unchanging hand. The second P is patience. Jesus is patient with us. And we have to know his patience. We have to know that he will never, never, no, never, never, never give up on us. Oh, he made us a promise, didn't he? Never to leave us, nor forsake us. Aren't you glad about it? That, that he's always there. Whether you are in the midst of the storms of life, hallelujah, he's there. Whether the heavy rains are falling, he's there, hallelujah. No matter if the strong winds are blowing, he's there, hallelujah. The Lord will keep you wherever you are, whether you're feeling like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place and you can't find your way, even when you feel that you're not making any progress, he's still calling to you, saying, children, have you any need? Children, do you have what you need? Or should I say, do you have who you need? But he's the source. You got to realize he's the source. No matter what the situation is, he's the source. Hallelujah. He's the one yeah. that you need. Amen. And he's still ready, hallelujah, mm -hmm. to meet you right where you are. Yeah. No matter what is your situation. Mm -hmm. Because our God yeah. is loving, hallelujah, mm -hmm. yes, and he's patient. Yes, yeah. He's our comforter. Yes. He's our wonderful counselor. Yes. He's our paraclete. Yes. He's the one who comes alongside to help us. Uh, and when he comes, hallelujah, you don't know how he's coming, uh, but you got to believe he is coming. Uh, and when he comes, it might be by his word, uh, a word that you've read, uh, a word that you've meditated on. It might be in a sermon. Uh, it might be in a Bible teaching. It might be in a Sunday school lesson that you heard. Uh, it might be the encouragement of a brother or your sister in Christ. Uh, it might be feeling his presence. Uh, and knowing without a doubt that he is God, knowing that Jesus is real, that he is alive, and he's living on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Jesus yeah. is always, always. Communicating, communicating with us yeah. and giving us the ability, hallelujah, yeah. to communicate with him. See, you just have to remember to trust his promise, know his patience, and you will find your purpose because he is the source. I don't know if you know it or not, but he is the fountain of every blessing.
And as he confronts Peter, Jesus could have been annoyed with Peter and the other disciples for going back to their old way of life. But see, Jesus knew what was going to happen. Just like he knew Peter yes. would deny him three times yes. before the cock crow. All right. Just like he knew that Judas would betray him. Yeah. Yeah. Just like he knew that the disciples would forsake him and run and hide. Yeah. In the same way, hallelujah, he knows us also. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? He loves us also, but he still loves us. Aren't you glad? He knows us, but he still loves us. He knows us, but he still cares for us. Come on now. We got to realize that we don't have it all together. Hallelujah. On our best days, we fall short. And it's only because of the grace and the mercy of God that we are not consumed by the justice of God. It's his mercy that allows our golden streams to roll on just a little while longer. Hallelujah. That's all right. Woo! Yes. Jesus teaches us yes. that there are generally two ways that we can deal with people. And Brother Darwin Dennis talked about it earlier in worship. There's two ways that we can deal with people. One is by condemning them and reprimanding them by being harsh to them and cruel toward them. But the other way, hallelujah, is by loving them, supporting them, helping them, coming alongside them, encouraging them, showing them, and helping them find out that there is a better way. I don't know about you, but I just feel that it's a blessing to see somebody's life change for the better, to see them change their behavior and enjoy a new life in Christ, uh, revealing and realizing that their life has value in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Knowing that their life means something. That their life is worth something. Hallelujah. And seeing what they can be and what they can achieve in a new life in Jesus Christ. That's what this Christian life is all about. If I can just help somebody along the way, then my living on this earth will not be in vain. And so, we see in this passage, Jesus, rather than rebuking yeah. and ridiculing these men. He pours out his love. Well. Meeting them right where they are. Helping them in the midst of their situation. Well. And providing for them yeah. what they stand in need of. He was showing them that, that if they trust him, if they will listen to him, hallelujah, he is the source and he can meet their needs. I'm going to close this thing up, but we're going to look at the last P, right. purpose. Yes. We have to understand God's purpose. Well, Jesus' purpose yes. in our lives. Yes. It, if we are going to fulfill his purpose in our lives, we have to understand that now we are called to be disciples of Jesus. We are called to be followers of Jesus Christ. 
And because that is what we are called to be, we are not to return to the things or the ways of the world. Amen. Amen. Don't put your hand to the plow and look back. Hallelujah. Because then you're not worthy of the kingdom. But you must continue in the way of the Lord. You must continue in the word of God. Hallelujah. You know, I asked myself the question, did Jesus have it planned for his disciples that after three years they would go back to their old ways? I don't think he had it planned, but I think he knew that it would happen. All right. And then this scripture came to my mind, Romans chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. And it says, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. Holiness is holy living. Yeah. And the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ yes. our Lord. Yes. Nothing in that verse sounds like a temporary calling to me. Let me say this. I don't know who I'm talking to All right. specifically. But I know that I'm talking to somebody Matter of fact, all of us, generally. Well, and I believe that this word came to me from God, and it was for me. Well, but what God told me to tell you is that you got to keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. You got to keep on looking to where you have been called to, amen, and don't be looking back to where you once were and thinking about that is going to be better back there. What you got to understand is that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, that all things are gone, hallelujah, and new things have come. Hey, we have been given a promise. We've been given a purpose. And I know that Jesus will patiently see it through. Hallelujah. We need to be ready for service. We need to be ready for action. When God says go, hallelujah, we ought to be ready. Amen. Philippians chapter 3 tells us that we need to forget about what's behind. And we need to press on toward the mark for the prize for the God for the goal of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And as you do that, you just got to remember that Jesus is the source. You need to open up your ears. You need to fine tune your spiritual radio. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's AM or whether it's FM, but you need to fine tune uh, that spiritual radio so that you can hear the voice of our Savior as he encouraged you to fight on, pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Why, Reverend? Well, I'm glad you asked because everything that has been done, everything that is being done right now, everything that will be done for you by God is all for your good. You just wait and watch. Wait and watch and see if the Lord won't bring you through. Oh, yes. I know a man, his name is Jesus. He can take the lemons in your life and turn them into the best lemonade that you ever tasted. Am I right about it? Hey, I know I'm right. Trouble in my way. I gotta cry sometimes. Trouble in 
my way. I gotta cry sometimes, but that's all right. I know that Jesus is my source. I know, hallelujah, he can fix it. He'll fix it. After a while. Yes, yes. Amen. Ooh, yes, sir. He's the source. Yes, yes, yes. And that there is nothing that can separate me from the love of God. Yes. Amen. 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 Nothing Amen. can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He's the source. The source of my joy, the source of my peace, the source of my strength, the source of my hope. He's the source of everything that I need. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the insight, for the illumination. Yes, Lord that you give us in your word, that yes, we can look at your word, Lord God, and we can see little nuances and various things that you want to convey to us through your word. And we thank you, Lord God, for what we have gotten out of it, that Jesus is the source, yeah. that we can know his promise, his patience, and his purpose and allow him to develop those things in our lives and father we just pray right now that if there's anybody here today Amen. who's searching mm -hmm. they're searching for the things that we have been talking about and they don't understand that the only place they can find the things that they need in their life is in Jesus yes, Lord. the Christ yes. Amen. The son mm -hmm. of the only living yes, and true God. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As we ask everyone to stand, there might be someone here today 